Welcome back for part three of our budget B-series board AM5 battle. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at MSI's B650 Tomahawk. This board comes in at the lowest retail cost of any of the three we've reviewed so far at $230 US, give or take depending on what retailer you find it at. But the question here isn't about the price. The question's about the value. Do you get enough out of this board for that price given there are some features that you're gonna be sacrificing? As always, let's jump right in and hear what MSI has to say while we get this thing unboxed and then we'll come back and maybe filter through some of the marketing BS and give you our actual opinions of the board. MSI is a little more sparse in their description than some of the other ones on their site, but they want you to unite as one. The MAG series fights alongside gamers in the pursuit of honor, whatever that means. So the board obviously supports AMD 7000 series chips and supports DDR5 up to 6400 megahertz for overclocking. Though if you're in a budget board like this, I would say there's no point in going above 6000. Um, it has a premium thermal solution, two and a half gig LAN, and Lightning M.2, uh, which is funny because it's only Gen 4 and they don't actually offer any Gen 5 on here. <laughs> Honestly, guys, I think that's enough from MSI. I'd rather just dive in and actually take a look at this board. So right away, let's address the elephant in the room. This board lacks any PCIe 5 support. That includes the expansion slots and the M.2s. And while that's not gonna hamper you with any current generation products, it could be something that holds you back down the road whenever you start looking to upgrade. Another important distinction is this board only sports a six layer PCB versus eight for the other two we looked at. But hey, I mean, if you're gonna shave $150 off the price, you gotta be willing to make some cuts somewhere, right? At least one of the areas they didn't make a cut is in power delivery. So. The board sports 14 two-in-one power stages, which is less than the other two boards. However, they are rated at 80 amps each, has a fairly substantial cooling setup over the VRMs to help everything run smooth, um, and dual eight pin connectors. Looking at you, Gigabyte, if they can rock dual eight pins on a board that costs $50 less and delivers more power, I'm not sure why you couldn't do it on yours. Like I said, the, it does have substantial cooling and heat sinks, but I, I will say, again, it's one of those things that's hard to pick up on video, but it does lag behind the other two boards. Um, the VRM heat sinks are not nearly as substantial and only two of the three M.2 slots are actually even covered with one of them just being exposed. Will that be an issue for you? At this ultra budget level, it's that word again, ultra budget on a $230 board, but at this ultra budget level, you gotta be honest with yourself, are you actually dropping three high-end M.2s in there and does it really matter? So again, it could be an area that's worth sacrificing a little bit of a feature for some price savings. One area where I do think this board punches above its weight is in the rear I.O. So we see a substantial number of USB ports, more than you could possibly need. They do have a display port out along with HDMI out, as well as a full complement of audio jacks. Again, looking at you, Gigabyte, if they can do it at less money, why can't you? Um, there is only one Type-C, which I've said it over and over and I'll say it again and I'll always say it, huge pet peeve of mine. All peripherals are moving towards Type-C. It's only a matter of time before that's the dominant connector out there and manufacturers need to be thinking ahead, especially if you're buying into like the first generation of the AM5 platform where you're probably gonna hang on to this for a little while and maybe drop another CPU in it down the road. So in my opinion, overall, is this board worth it? Um, I say probably not. This is one that I'm gonna stay away. It offers a solid feature set for the price. However, unless you're really trying to squeeze your pennies, and if you are, you can get more features for about the same amount of money from other manufacturers. But 
I would say it's worth investing a few extra dollars to get maybe a little bit better board that's gonna offer you some more future proofing. But if you are dead set on this, if you're an MSI fanboy, if you absolutely have to have this board, it's the only one that you can get your hands on. Again, I'll link some potential parts in a build down in the description below, but overall, I would encourage you maybe consider the Gigabyte board or if you have a little bit extra money, the ASUS boards that we've previously reviewed. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to check out one of these. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out some of our other content, and as always, thanks for watching.